before the, the game studies, no? but I think that was a quite fortunate, quite a very fortunate uh, mistake, to say, because the idea of the toolkit, which I'm presenting today, is to take best practices towards practices which are not, maybe not even yet practices. Because, as it was said before, there is a huge potential for cooperation. But in order to cooperate, in order to initiate and to foster cooperation among cities, we need to speak a common language. We need to have common tools in order to ensure that the actions we undertake are sustainable. Italy was reminded uh, beforehand as a huge number of town training initiatives throughout the country. But most of them, they have lost their momentum because they were linked with a given mayor, a given administration, a given representative of civil society, and after that person stepped out of office, the momentum was lost, the cooperation was lost. And that does create frustration. It is very important to remember that no mayor ever gets elected to initiate cross-border or international cooperation. And usually, the local community, the civil society, when they look at such initiatives, they look at it with a little bit of skepticism. They are critical about such initiatives. They look, oh well, they're spending our money to go abroad. They're spending our money to go all the way, come all the way down to Galicia in order to have a nice job. But, yeah, but through that, they are just spending our money to have a nice dinner and some nice Italian wine. So all these uh, cooperation activities, we need to ensure that there, there is accountability that the population, that the voters, they understand the meaning of this cooperation and that there is a shared goal behind the initiative that is undertaken. Now, we know that we know that there are a number of processes, uh, call it globalization, call it, uh, sorry for that, that's not working as it should have been, um, deterior deterritorialization, all these processes, basically, what do they tell us? Is they tell us that the national states are not anymore the sole uh, actors which are in charge of international relations. Cities can undertake actions which pertain to the realm of international relations. And then they can do it in a very effective way. That's why we are talking about city to city diplomacy, which is characterized or described as the full range of processes initiated by city institutions and civil society organizations engaging international relations with the aim of representing themselves and their interests to one another. And I would like to add that, that the interest, the, the most important interests which are represented in this activity are those of our citizens. The Council of Europe wanted to have this toolkit that was uh, said beforehand because they wanted to support the activity of cities. They want to give a further instrument to enable city to experience good governance at the global level, at the international level. In order to do that, we need to be aware of the opportunities that we actually face when we talk about international relations. Now, there are a number of triggering factors for uh, city-to-city diplomacy, for international relations carried out by cities. There is a so-called utilitarian approach, the self-interest of cities and their citizens. They want to maximize, as we see, economic revenue, or they want to attract investment, or they want to portray a given image of the city through city branding. But there is also a solidarity approach. There is an approach that push a city to partake to the uh, condition of another city somewhere else in the world. And that's the case of uh, conflict resolution, peace building processes, humanitarian aid. There is an also a very important approach, which is participation approach. Many times cities, they feel compelled to act on the international arena to respond to the public opinion in their own cities, in their own municipality. There is a huge momentum for public participation, and the cities need to attract, to be able to intersect that momentum and to deploy international activities to satisfy the need of their cities. Now, what are the factors that they intervene in the uh, potentiality of city-to-city -city diplomacy? Of course, resource availability. And here we are talking as much as money as intangible assets. The capacity of the local administrator, the capacity of the civil society organization that uh, operate within a given city. 
legal and administrative frameworks. Cities should be aware that, yes, international relations will normally uh, pertain to the activities of the state, but there are available legal framework, there are available financial framework to act internationally. Participation and representation. Many times cities, especially if located in border areas, just like the one we are living in, they are not involved in the main representation processes at the national level. And via international cooperation, they can affirm a new role for themselves and their citizens. There is a clear center periphery divide. In order to escape a peripheral position, we can engage in international cooperation. And of course, the existence of international networks. Cities, they can engage within the Committee of the Region, within the Committees of the Council of Europe, within other structure of the European Union to make their voice heard, to take to the international arena issues and cases that might not be able to be represented nationally. In the toolkit, uh, something like 50, uh, 50 and more examples are given in order to explain the different potentiality of city-to-city uh, -city diplomacy. We identify five main areas within which city they have a privileged uh, opportunity to interact internationally. Security, let's just think about soft diplomatic activity, about uh, peace building and peacekeeping and post-conflict resolution. Why are city privileged actors? Well, cities do not have armies, so they are compelled to look at conflict in a peaceful, in a dialogue way, in a dialogue-driven way. Let's think about development. Cities, they have a proximity with other cities, and they can immediately work in terms of deploying uh, emergency aid, humanitarian aid. Let's think about the many different situations with civil protection acts. The capacity of the city through its more streamlined structure reduces the wastage of money, reduces the wastage of time, that many times characterize national uh, national value. Then, of course, we have the economy. Cities, they are both compelled to have full economic activities to attract businesses through city branding, but they can also operate with push diplomacy activities. They can also uh, join uh, fairs, they can join events, they could engage in international competitions as we as it was before I mentioned. And then of course culture, which is the main topic where uh, cities operate globally and internationally by networks which can enhance their uh, cultural heritage, which can portray their character, cultural heritage and which can form the basis for further cooperation, both in economic and in cultural terms. And of course, representation, which is the capacity that cities have, because of their accountability, their proximity with citizens, to engage and represent interests, which are common interests of all citizens, for instance, in the European Union. This is the case, as was mentioned before, with the uh, town twinning and network twin town. Where does civic participation come in at this level? Okay, out of these 50 uh, examples that we, that we managed to collect, we managed also to uh, come up with some insights. City to city is promising as to strive for an integrated approach. That was exactly what was pointed out before by uh, Professor Sufi. We should not just look at it in a reductive way. We shouldn't just look of company as something that has to do with two administration coming together. We should get more stakeholders involved. It is very important to analyze the international context within, the, within which this activity is, under, is undertaken. That's because we don't want to uh, get into troubles with central states. We don't want to have, want to have our initiative blocked. Uh, in order to initiate the country in Italy, we need to have the green light from the Prime Minister office. It is important to know such rules in order to ensure that the town training process is, uh, uh, is achieving what we actually hope for. It is important to allow for different uh, stakeholders to come in, but it is important to come in with a clear, good governance perspective. And that's the responsibility of the civil society as well as local authorities to strive for a good governance perspective uh, to enact all the tools for monitoring and implementing that are available in order to ensure good governance. Mm -hmm. 
let us look at the uh, one of the most important insights that we have for city to city diplomacy. City cities they need to base their efforts on concrete objectives. Just the presentation we had before from Inverness, it was a clear picture of what they want, of what they would like to achieve, of who the actors are who can take on these activities. And this is key when we want to uh, initiate uh, cooperation between cities. Now, I just keep on the, to give you a flavor of what the toolkit is about. The toolkit doesn't want to be prescriptive, but it wants to be a companion to help local authorities to join these international activities. We need to have a set of common guiding questions that they will enable uh, local authorities, representatives from different municipalities to work together on a similar topic. Now, the old toolkit is full of uh, guiding questions on the obstacles, on the obstacles that we have to overcome, on the core effects that we want to achieve. But I think this slide pretty much synthesizes the old toolkit as it presents the logical framework within which uh, city to city cooperation, city to city diplomacy should be set. First of all, it is important to set the basis for cooperation. That's what we're doing here today, especially in the afternoon. There will be workshop when different actors can set the basis for such cooperation. They can understand the advantages and the risk of CPC action. We were talking before about sustainability. It is important to, be, to ensure that there are no risks associated with the action I take today. Because a wrong action taken today determines that tomorrow there will be no further action. Setting the pace of, the pace of cooperation. It is important to have a long-term plan. It's not just about creating a one a one shot initiative. It's not just about creating a festival because we have to run after the uh, AHL money, but it's about to create a framework within which uh, cooperation can last for a longer time. It is important to set the goals for cooperation. Now, how do we set the goals? First of all, we need to understand if there is a shared problem. Is the action we are undertaking really something that matters to both communities? What does it matter for both communities? If one community just wants to achieve political visibility, for instance, while the other they want to achieve a concrete objective, well, that can create a big problem in the long run because we are not setting cooperation on the same level, on the same pace. Which are the shared goals and which are the shared opportunity, opportunities? Which are the spillover effect that we will gain through cooperation overall? Then it is important to identify the key actors. And here is a matter of identifying competencies, ensuring participation, and ensuring accountability. Then we can ask ourselves whether the city-to-city -city diplomacy process that we have initiated so far necessitate of a joint structure. We might think that in order to sustain it in the future, in order to have this beyond the effect, we might want some intermunicipal cooperation bodies that are established and that they operate as a permanent agency to foster cooperation among the uh, cities involved. And then, of course, it is important, once again, always to monitor the areas within which seek to seek diplomacy uh, develops. Because only through constant monitoring, we can feed our citizens back with the achievement they've taken, and we can ensure that new areas can be, uh, can be um, achieved and new goals can be achieved. Okay, just to come to a conclusion, the toolkit also uh, illustrates a number of Council of Europe committees, programs, and bodies that they can support such initiatives. But what it really does is giving is give you a methodology to start the process and to maintain the process. And I think better than any more words for me, it would be for you to take part in the workshop today, when my researchers, when my uh, colleagues from music will lead you through brainstorming and uh, prioritization in order to come up by tonight with a number of concrete projects that hopefully we could present on the March opportunities offered by both Urbach and uh, the European Agency for Culture and Education. Thank you so much. Sorry for the power not working and I look forward to what we'll give this afternoon. Thank you.